we have lots of business schools training people to develop and to work in corporations and smaller businesses. Only two out of the thousands of business schools in the, in the country are teaching sustainable business practices. One friend of mine went to Harvard Business School, and on his very first day in class, they were given a test case uh, that you're a drug company, and uh, a couple of people have died from your over-the-counter drug. What do you do? Do you recall the drug? Do you calculate the damages? What? And, and my friend, who didn't know yet uh, how things operated in this school, immediately said, recall the product. And everybody laughed in the room, and the teacher said, have you calculated how many lives you can afford to lose before you need to recall? This is what's being taught. It's all a matter of money. It's all a matter of deciding how much money can you make, how much can you afford in losses, how deceptive do you have to be to make that money. It's crazy. We measure our economies in money. We don't measure our economies in the well-being of the people. We don't measure economies in, uh, let's say, quality of life indicators such as Hazel Henderson, the economist, has uh, developed many decades ago, and other people have spun off from that to have quality of life indicators possible. The king of Bhutan, a little tiny Himalayan country, a few years ago announced that his economy would henceforth be measured in the happiness of his people. What a concept. Why not measure an economy in terms of, of uh, how many children graduate from school and how many children are healthy and uh, you know, are free of disease and measure all the positive things that a culture can measure, and there are plenty of them to measure. Instead of measuring only the money flow, which means the worse your economy gets, the better it looks on paper. Because if you have a huge oil spill and it's very expensive to clean up, good for the economy. Um, there are, are small economies in Asia that have been brought into the world economy on the grounds that they had, weren't making any money and thus were worthless in the economy. But they were people who were feeding themselves and weaving beautiful brocade clothing and having festivals and getting along with more than one religion in the culture, like the small country of Ladakh, which Helena Norberg Hodge studied and wrote Ancient Futures. Uh, about and showed in a, in a video how well they were living and then as they're brought into the world economy and you take the men and boys out and you pay them in small coin and you leave the old people and the women and the children to fend for themselves and you bring in subsidized foods to stop them from growing their own and so you maneuver them into the world economy and there's now some cash flow there so you say it's a better economy but they have lost so much. They are now in a polluted city with kerosene fumes and factory smoke, and they're buying cigarettes, and um, you know, the, the whole economy has, has collapsed from the point of view of serving people well, creating healthy people. Now the people are sick and unhappy and miserable and poor, when before that happened, when you interviewed them, they didn't know about poverty, wasn't there. So we have to really look at what's been done in the past couple of hundred years, uh, not to mention the past couple of thousands of years of empire building mode, where may the best man win and be the authority and, and be able to tell everybody else what's good for them, to going into a new mode of evolution where people are responsible for themselves and they want to be. People don't want to be put into little boxes in these big companies anymore and told what to do. They want to be treated like intelligent living beings that can understand the company, that can contribute to it. And those businesses that are practicing more democratic decision making, that are opening up their hierarchies to feedback from their employees, are becoming better businesses that are making more money. We have enough money to waste a trillion dollars in Iraq, and yet we cannot give people quality health care free. What does that say to us? Well, it's obviously a disgrace that our country is so low on the list of effective health care systems and spends so much more money than anyone else's health care system. 
why it is that every attempt on the part of political leadership to get something better going in health care, um, even funding children to get health care and things like that, and it's always turned down, is because we have an extraordinarily powerful lobby system in Washington. And uh, you can't compete by buying your congressman a hot dog when one of the big pharmaceuticals can come in and take them on vacation and show, these, show them all kinds of benefits of collaboration. Uh, we're just up against the wall in that sense. We have a system that just keeps itself in power, keeps itself going, is only interested in how much money it can make, and can force votes in our government to go their way. It used to be the case that many of our Washington politicians came out of the legal profession, and uh, I'm sure people have noticed that nowadays they seem to come out of businesses. And uh, that's no accident, I think. Um, and it's part of this whole business of allying business with the government and with science so that business has become the controlling agent of our science practice and our governmental practice. So it is controlling both the priesthood that tells us how our world functions and who we are within it, uh, what kind of beings we are with ADD or whatever, and uh, also is controlling the governance of the country and is owning the media, which is supposed to be independent and objective and unbiased and all that. So we have everything in our world now slanted toward big business, and they really do have the power to dictate to all the other parts of the system. Their lobbies are way better paid. Their campaign finance contributions are way bigger than anybody else's. So that's what we're stuck with now and why we have to ask ourselves if this turns out not to have been good for us. I mean, we believed in business. We thought, oh, you know, let everybody compete and the best businesses will win and there'll be trickle-down effects and everything will work well for our society. But we see now that it hasn't worked, that it is unsustainable, that it has generated obscene wealth and extreme poverty. Uh, no healthy living system can possibly function that way. You cannot have one of your organs exploiting the rest of the body for its benefit. It simply wouldn't work. You would die of that kind of an economic system or political system. In our bodies, whenever there's a problem anywhere in the body, aid is immediately sent to put that part of the body back on its feet, so to speak, and there's no complaint from any other part of the body because there's an innate holistic knowing in your body that every part must be healthy for the whole thing to be healthy. And it's the same of any living system such as a human society. When uh, the legislation acro came across our uh, legislators' desks for joining the World Trade Organization. Nobody read the proposal, except one congressman who finally said, oh, wow, I didn't know this was what it was about, and he offered $10,000 to anybody who would read that proposal before they signed it. But they only read the little abstract on the top page and didn't realize that we gave away our national sovereignty in joining the World Trade Organization because we signed an agreement that says that any state, national, or local law that comes into conflict with World Trade Organization policies, not laws, but just their policies, the policy of the World Trade Organization will prevail. And that's why in California, when we had a gasoline additive that was seeping into our well water and we tried to get rid of that additive, the World Trade Organization said, no, you can't interfere with the profits of the country in Canada, of the company in Canada that's making this uh, gasoline additive. So everything goes to business and nothing goes to the people who are getting unhealthy because of the practices of the businessmen. Now, this is the story of our health care system. It is a business, not a service. When I look at political candidates nowadays, I say, I would vote for the candidate that will get up and say, I'm going to be totally honest with you. If 
there's any kind of pressure on me from behind, from the sides, from anywhere, I'm going to tell you what that pressure is and ask you to support me. And I will die in that process if necessary. They would have my vote. Because part of this evolution is about transparency. And when you know that politicians are going into a, si a situation, a political climate that's totally manipulated by big companies and, and uh, that kind of lobbying effect, uh, then the only way out of this is to start getting honest with each other. We can't do this scapegoating of a Martha Stewart here and there and, and saying, oh, isn't it deplorable how dishonest it is? Isn't it too bad about the Catholic Church and all the child rape in society at large? And isn't it too bad that we're, uh, you know, being deceived by our own government, that our Constitution is being eroded? Well, we can afford it. It's a trade-off. We love that word in our society. It's a trade-off. We've still got our our, our paycheck and our six pack of beer. So the mortgage we can't afford, we have to move to a different house. We've got to accept these trade-offs. No, we don't. We can demand that life be lived fully and humanly and with joy on this planet. And there are all kinds of ways to do it. And I say, you know, thank God or goddess for the internet because now we have immense amounts of information at our fingertips. We can talk to each other about the, uh, across the planet. Young people can decide not to kill each other in one generation and save all that war money for building a better world. And young people don't have to clean up our mess. They can just build the world they want. They can learn about healthy food and healthy air and healthy water and figure out how to do that again on this planet together with a high-tech lifestyle that's non-toxic and recyclable. It's wide open, the future.